That's me, Peaches Geldof. I'm about to turn 16, and I like to think of myself as an opinionated teenager. Are you a rebel? Yes, I'm the biggest rebel out there. Fuck a roll. I've been asked to make this film about what's really going on inside our confused teenage heads, which is kind of cool. I think I'm a bit of a handful, I'm a bit um, mouthy, but I think most teenagers out there are a bit <laughs> annoying. But why are we so annoying? Are we being stereotyped? Or are we just plain misunderstood? That's what I plan to find out. Add to that sensationalist headlines in the press, and it starts to look like everyone's got it in for us. You're Britain, one in four teenage boys is a criminal. 81% um, of teenagers have apparently been drunk before in their lives. Um, this article is about a girl who's pregnant again at 14 without her mother's knowledge. Um, I think these articles are actually really typical. I mean, I kind of agree with some of it. Of course, like when you're younger, you want to rebel, and a lot of a lot of boys I know are could be labelled yobs. I think it's true that if you're in a group of people and they're doing things like graffiti, they're smoking pot, they're doing drugs, you're, you're going to be sucked into it, of course, because you want to fit in, and that's kind of part of being a teenager. It's something you have to go through. So maybe if your friends are yobs, then you're going to become a yob yourself. But I think we have to find out what is a yob. I'm going to go up to Bolton to see if there is any truth in this article about how teenage gangs are making our lives hell and the residents are complaining about drinking vandalism, like the noise is too loud. I'm going to go and see if um, the police are being a bit unfair on that or not. I really hope that the Bolton teenagers that I'm going to meet don't think of me as some kind of posh girl from London who doesn't understand them. I hope I get along with them. I think it'll be good because, of course, we have the, the thing in common that we're all teenagers. And even though our experiences are different, some of them, I hope, I'll find out will kind of be the same. So what is it with teenagers and bands? Um, well, I think it's kind of the whole idea of being on stage and performing in front of people and the idea of fame and, like, and being kind of edgy and cool and sexy and all of that stuff is related with music and with punk music, like, tonight. It's kind of, like, it's kind of bohemian, I guess. I think it's really cool, like, what they're doing today. Teenagers, to be honest, aren't layabouts. It's just a stage in your life where you're developing, where your brain is developing, where your, where your body is. So it's like, oh, they're layabouts, they have nothing to do, but it's just because your hormones are rushing around, I think. But no, I think this proves that we're not layabouts. We can organise things, we can put a lot of effort into things for things we're passionate about, like, like punk music, it's cool. <laughs> It's good to discover teenagers aren't all a lost cause, but I was starting to wonder, where was the teenage voice? What happened to sit-ins, protests, and all-round general anarchy? Are teenagers just not interested in the world? Back in London, I consulted my friends, Claire and Debs. I think that um, every single teenager in the world is really self-centered and basically um, only cares about um, stuff that involves them and their social group and their family and their problems and I don't think really if we tell the truth we're not that interested in like politics and like helping the world unlike Deborah who is obsessed with helping the world. No I just think it's um I don't think it's fair to make a generalization that all teenagers are completely self-absorbed that's only really talking about richer countries yeah I know it's a bit of an extreme but in third world countries there are children yeah, yeah, age who are like living yeah. on the streets and yeah. Being, Work that like work all day just to provide some food for their family. Yeah, that's, that's true. They and I think I think we should take heed of that. And I think we should. I but think that's because they don't have the chances chance. to know, but let their country I'm... develop. I think if they did have the chance to let them develop, they would have the same problems as normal teenagers just no, because they, would, they live in such extreme poverty and such terrible circumstances. But I don't think, I mean, us as, us as a good group of friends, I don't think we're completely self-absorbed. No, we are true. aware of others. We're not completely selfish. We are generous like, no, in no, our but, own ways. But um, we but, don't do much about yeah. it, though. We might talk about it, but that's not doing anything about it. Do you not moving out, we kind of give your Saturday, because I know if I had to kind of um, give up some of my half term to go and pick up rubbish, I wouldn't find it that fun because I'm not very a very environmental person. But do you mind? Do you really care about the environment that much? 
Yes, I think because in the end it's the world that I live in as much as anyone else lives yeah. in. And so it's really important that I, I like giving up my Saturday because I know that it's, it's helping other people. And besides which, it's really quite an enjoyable and fun time meeting other people yeah. who are interested in the environment as well. Being cool bother you? Um, hugely. Um, I think in the society that I live in and the circle of friends that I have, if you're not cool, um, then you're kind of a loser. And I think that I would be really shallow um, to say this, but um, I want to be truthful and say that I do um, kind of care a lot about what people think One of about. The biggest me. irony is to talk about being individual, being distinctive, being different. But actually, of course, it's as much about belonging to something. It's as much about feeling secure in being part of a group. And, and so that involves conformity. I think it's true because if you go into like high street shops, the fashion changes every week and it's kind of made for the teenager because if you don't get that style that's in the next week, you're out of fashion. So we kind of spend more money. Bands are being manufactured for us with like little poppy bands being made into the image of what people buy and so basically we're just selling out teenage society is kind of selling out well that's my research over and it's been an interesting journey when i started out i thought i understood what it was to be a teenager but the past few weeks has made me rethink the whole concept I think I kind of know what it's all about really in that we're kind of victims of the media and I think we're really exploited and I think that um, teenagers in themselves are really self-conscious after, um, after meeting with the sociologist I think that I found that we're really self-conscious and we need to um, feel we feel the need to belong to a tribe to kind of um, fit in but do you not see yourself as like an individual um, well after these chats I don't at all um, after speaking to these people it's kind of like made me wake up a bit and seem that it's kind of impossible to be an individual and I might be the most stereotypical teenager of <laughs> all The deadline for my article is looming, so it's time to make sense of my research. What is youth culture? Is it a state of mind? Is it a physical state? Or is it a sociological state? The teenager is not the rebel of society that they used to be. They've got much more now kind of laid out on a plate for them. I think it's wrong to talk about an average teenager in the same way there is no average 30-year-old. In fact, the brain is undergoing loads of change during the teenage years. Remember, as always, you're only to the 16 to 20-year-old L-girl reader. I'm out the way, it's back to crazy teenage life. But maybe not quite as crazy as I originally thought. Our teenage dreams so hard to beat Every time she walks down the street So, are teens unfairly stereotyped? Maybe. Misunderstood? Definitely. But one thing's for sure, making this film has been a real eye-opener for me. Teenagers on the whole, I guess it was a bit stupid of me to be like rebellious and like, yeah, fight the power, but they're actually not. I mean, is it a worry for you that teenagers aren't rebelling like you thought? I think to the ones who aren't rebelling, go out, rebel against society, stop being consumer and fight the power. <laughs> there should be a balance between being rebellious and picking up rubbish and not being rebellious at all. And I think once you've got that like balance between being a bit crazy but knowing when to calm it down, then you're the perfect teenager. Should we do running, baby? Running. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I think that I'm a teenage stereotype, that I place way too much importance on people being cool or not, and I think that I should be stop being so close-minded and kind of start speaking to everyone. <laughs> Oh my God. I really did. I really did. I really did. You feel lucky to be young and to be 
a teenager. Yeah, it makes me appreciate a lot being young and being youthful and being healthy, and it's just great, yeah. I think it's the funnest time of your life. Every time that I get older, like my 16th birthday is coming up, and I'm kind of like, I'm happy to be 16 because it's a cool age, but I know when my 17th is coming up, I'll be like, oh my God, I'll have to like fly the nest soon and like buy a house or whatever. Those things are so alien to me and it's quite scary, but. What do you think you'll be like at 30 then? Um, having a midlife crisis. <laughs> Definitely, I'm such a loser. I wanna hold you, wanna hold you tight. Get teenage kicks, press through.